Okay, here I am, folks. <laughs> I'm going to do the message all over again. I'm going to send it to you on the house pre-recorded. So uh, the message is entitled Perseverance. Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather healed. In the year 1678, a man by the name of John Bunyan was arrested and put in jail for his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And while he was there, he wrote one of the most significant books ever written. The book is entitled Pilgrim's Progress. It's the story of the Christian life with all of its temptations, pitfalls, challenges, and, um, and dangers. The book follows the pathway of a man named Christian who represents all believers and has traveled to the, celest the celestial kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. He first discovers the cross when he unloads a heavy backpack of sin that he's been carrying on his back all of his life and which he's desperate to get rid of. And the cross is able to take it away from him. And from there, he travels down the road that every believer must follow. He encounters sinking pools, giants that want to destroy him, a place called Vanity Fair where he's presented with every kind of pleasure and temptation to steer him off the path of following Jesus. And he meets different people along the way. For example, one person who tried to find an easier road to the celestial city, but ended up being destroyed. And another one who was faithful to the Lord, but ended up being murdered for his faith. And when he finally reaches the celestial city, to his shock, he discovers he's got to swim through the waters of death to be able to enter into the kingdom of God. Wow. It's never easy. There's all kinds of distractions along the way. There are times when Jesus has to rescue him out of trouble, even save him from himself. Many times he feels like giving up. Other times he's slowed down by his own internal complacency and apathy. And the threat of death is always before him. But he presses on and on and on until he completes the journey. And finally, victory is his. And at last, he gets to see Jesus and be with him forever. Not too many have read this book, and fewer still know about it. Uh, but besides the Bible, it's a must read for every Christian. And you can download it free from the internet. Now, the thing I love about this book is that it tells the truth. It tells the truth. The Christian life is not easy. It's not supposed to be easy not supposed to be. And the novel is a testament and an indictment against the soft soap, easy peasy, self-centered, emotionally based, powerless form of Christianity we see today. This book tells the truth. And if I were to choose one overall theme that it teaches about following Jesus, I would summarize it with one word, perseverance, perseverance. That is pressing on with Jesus no matter what, seeking to please him in all we do, regardless of how difficult or costly or challenging it is, never giving up in the face of the worst of troubles, fighting through discouragement, facing fear, denying the, pe the passions of the flesh, presenting yourself before the Lord daily, daily, because you know if you don't, you're going to falter. And you also know that the life in Jesus needs to be cultivated on a daily basis so you can grow. Perseverance is continuing to rise up when you're struck down, resisting the enemy when he attacks. It's refusing to listen to anything your heart and mind may tell you that is contrary to the word of God. It's learning to draw on the power of God instead of relying on your own strength. In 2 Corinthians 7 to 11, 2 Corinthians 4 rather, 7 to 11 talks about it, where it says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. It is to continually 
fan the flame of the Holy Spirit in you and watching yourself closely from day to day to make sure that the fire doesn't become weak, all the while battling the forces that seek to snuff it out. Perseverance is to be diligent in seeking Jesus when every ounce of your being wants to take a break. Perseverance is recognizing when the old nature looks to rise up and take you away from the red hot devotion to the Lord and tie you up with every distraction you can imagine. Perseverance is standing firm against the flesh and saying, no way, old man, no way. You're not going to rob me of what I have with Jesus. It's telling the enemy, take your best shot. Offer me the whole world on a platter. Pound me with adversity. Take away my worldly goods. Hurt me as far as the, the Lord will allow. Shout and rage and beat me down and do all you know how, but you will not drag me away from Jesus. You will not diminish my love for him. You will never convince me to put him on the back burner of my life and put other things in his place, no matter how important they may be. You will not bring me down with accusations, false guilt, condemnation, hopelessness, frustration, anger, and especially not the bitterness of discontent. Not a, not a chance. You may kill my body. You may strip me of everything I own persecute me, mock me, insult me. You may turn the whole world against me, but I will never let go of Jesus. I will not hang my head down. I will not quit. I will persevere because he persevered for me. So I can say like Job, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. Like David, I will say, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. I will say like Micah, do not rejoice over me, my enemy. Though I may be down now, I will rise again. Though I be in darkness, yet the Lord shall be a light for me. Trouble makes me stronger, you see. Adversity makes me better. Trials perfect me. Setbacks make me more determined than ever because they drive me to Jesus and by his grace, I will persevere until I prevail. Perseverance is one of the key aspects of the Christian life. The apostle Peter tells us in 2 Peter 1, 5 to 9, but also for this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to your knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgetting, forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. So every true believer will be trained in the area of perseverance, just like the story of the pilgrim's progress. Our voyage through life into the kingdom of God will be filled with obstacles. And this is deliberately allowed by our Lord. It's a part of the process of making us like Jesus. The apostle Paul once wrote in 2 Timothy 3.12, yea, and all who live a godly life will suffer persecution. And I would add to that, will suffer our share of trouble and pain too. Getting saved costs you everything. I'm sorry, getting saved costs you nothing. Getting saved costs you nothing, but following Jesus costs you everything. And to those who truly know, know him, the cost is nothing compared to what they receive. So every step of the way, you will be tested. And if your salvation is real, you will prevail. Not by might, not by power, not because you're a good and faithful believer, not by your performance, not by anything that you may contribute, but by his spirit provided that you persevere. So don't worry about how you're going to face up to the adversity you are bound to experience. That's not the biggest challenge you'll face. The biggest challenge you'll face is to persevere in seeking Jesus every day through his word, through prayer, through fellowship in meaningful relationships with fellow believers through service. The most difficult challenge will not be how to get through the troubles of this life as they come. Nor will it be to encourage yourself in the Lord when it's the last thing you feel like doing. Oh, those times will come all right, but they won't be your biggest problem. No, your biggest problem will be to push through the built-in apathy that resides in all of us through our sin nature and pursue Jesus each day, keeping our relationship with him vibrant, healthy, consistent, and strong, to meet with him the same time, the same place, no matter what. Yes, in the most difficult circumstances, but even more difficult to meet with him through the grinding, monotonous, everyday routine of life. Because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is so weak. And the more responsibilities you have in life, the more your energy will be depleted, making seeking Jesus all the more challenging. Now, there's no simple or easy way to get through it, except to dig deep, draw on the spirit, and do it anyway. 
do it anyway. I'm going to preach a whole message on this someday because I think it's important to give you practical ways to push through when every fiber of your being doesn't feel like it. But for now, let me share that if you overcome in this area, you'll be able to handle anything that comes to you, anything. And perseverance will become part of your nature. And Jesus will reward you greatly as you cling to him and refuse to let him go. Now, the word of God is loaded with verses on this subject. So here are some of them. You ready? Romans 5, 3, uh, th yeah, Romans 5, 3 to 4. Not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. James 1.12, blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Second, Th Second Thessalonians 3.13, but as for you, brethren, do not grow weary of doing good. Ephesians 6.18, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. With this in view, be on the alert. With all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Galatians 6, 9, let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time, we will reap if we do not grow weary. Grow weary. 2 Timothy 2, 12, if we endure, we shall, also, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. 1 Corinthians 13, 7, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. 2 Timothy 1, 13 and 14, retain the standard of good sound words which you have heard from me in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in you the treasure which has been entrusted to you. Hebrews 10, 36, for you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. Psalm 16, 8, I have set the Lord continually before me and because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Philippians 3, 7, but what things were gained to me, these things I've counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I've counted all things as loss, that I may, that I count, I count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness, which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained it or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are in the past and looking forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal it. First Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you are called. And you make the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Romans 12, 12, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer. You know, I can't help thinking about the Lord Jesus and how he persevered. He was hated and rejected of men. He was despised by his own people. Now, you know what? Let, let's, let, let's, let's allow the word of God to tell us. Isaiah 53, verses 1 to 12. He has no former comeliness when we see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. But surely he has borne our griefs and he's carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep. Before its shears it's silent. He opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. And when you make his soul an offering for sin, he will see his seed. He shall prolong his days. 
and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. You know, this reveals the heart of the Lord Jesus. He faced the worst that the world could throw at him during his short life on earth, but he had one thing in mind, and that was to finish the race that the Father had put before him and press on fe facing adversity from the moment he started his ministry when the devil tempted him for 40 days after he had fasted. His perseverance led him to the most brutal, brutal death that man ever devised, the crucifixion. And there he had the whole sins, the sins of the whole world laid on him. And I thought to myself, he could have backed out at any time, but no, he persevered. He could have made it easy on himself, but no, he persevered. He chose to hang in there and suffer and bleed while being ridiculed by all those around him, abandoned by everyone he loved. And when he could stand it no more and death finally came to relieve him of the pain, still he refused to back off. He held on because he knew if he backed off, Forgiveness would not be achieved for you and me. Intimacy would not be possible and the devil would not be defeated. So does it make sense to believe or to know that those who follow him should be cowards, weaklings, quitters, dull, lifeless, complacent, comfortable? Certainly not. Nevertheless, like him, every one of us will be severely tempted to let go, to throw up our hands and give up, to take the easy way out, no, I can't stomach that thought. Can you? I can't imagine throwing in the towel and quitting in the light of all he's done for me. I can't be comfortable with the thought of being lukewarm towards him and letting my troubles overwhelm me. I want to be like him. I want to please him. I want Jesus to be glorified in me throughout my life until I too cross the river of death and enter into the celestial city. It's the least I can do. And if persevering through trials is a must in the Christian life, so be it. By his grace, I believe we will all overcome if we don't take our eyes off him. So let these verses encourage you. Matthew 24, 13. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Matthew 10, 22. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. James 1, 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to all those who love him. Mark 13, 13. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. 2 Timothy 2, 12. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overcome you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you will be able to endure it. James 5.11, behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you've seen the purpose of the Lord and how the Lord, Lord is compassionate and merciful. Hebrews 3.14, we have come to share in Christ if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. Perseverance. James 1, 2, and 4, count it all joy, my brethren, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Matthew 24, 12, and because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will go cold, but Revelation 3, 11 says, I am coming soon, hold fast what you have, and see that no one seizes your crown. I wanted to close this message with an appropriate song or poem about endurance, perseverance. So I could cap it off with inspirational thoughts. So here it is. The poem is entitled On and On. Ready? Some days I just don't feel like going on because the trial before me is too long. By now I thought for sure it would be gone, but it goes on and on. I feel the strength within me fading fast. I pray so hard the trial will not last. I can't help thinking, this is all so wrong, but it goes on and on. Then I remember the Apostle Paul. He suffered much and pressed on through it all. 
He said, through Jesus, I can do it all, as it went on and on. Well, that kind of strength you can't find on your own. You can only receive it at God's throne, where you find it, and you find out you won't face it alone, though it goes on and on. You think of Jesus suffering for you, how he was scourged and beaten black and blue, and though the cross was heavy, Jesus knew he must go on and on. How could he stand the piercing of the nails for hours holding fast where most men failed, knowing that sin, if he should not prevail, would carry on and on? His perseverance strongly speaks to me that I too must push through to victory. And so I will because he is with me to endure on and on and seek his face and presence every day, no matter what, to walk within his way resolving to persist to trust and pray and worship on and on. By this, we glorify him through our trials, to brush away the doubt with joy and smiles, believing through the pain and all the while, we praise him on and on. We love him on and on. We trust him on and on, because it won't be long. This trial will soon be gone. This is Pastor Alex Lepo saying, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may his abiding presence be with you always. Goodbye.